And support is now growing in Congress for a plan to empower Republican Representative Patrick McHenry as House Speaker Pro Tem, which would allow Congress to function until a permanent speaker is chosen. Political science professor Stephen Caliendo of North Central College joining us now. Thanks so much for being with us. It's great to be with you. So most Democrats are endorsing this option of uh, promoting the Speaker Pro Tem while Republicans are pushing back against it. How could empowering McHenry really impact both parties here? The Democrats uh, certainly aren't going to help a long-term solution for the Republicans, but I think they also understand that there's work that needs to be done. And I think most Republicans understand in the House understand that as well. So this would be a short-term solution. It's really interesting, though, isn't it, Natalie? We, we, it's the same short-term solution that uh, same type of short-term solution than we came up with when the government wasn't going to get funded at all. Mm -hmm. Push the can down the road 45 days and hope you'll have a better solution then. But something has to happen because they cannot pass any legislation without a Speaker of the House. And it doesn't seem like Jim Jordan is ready to step down uh, from his candidacy at this moment. And Republicans initiated the ouster of Speaker Kevin McCarthy two weeks ago, but they can't even come to an agreement on a replacement. So what is this signal about the Republican Party itself? Well, I don't know if it's the whole party. I mean, there's only there were only eight people who really made that decision, and and uh, the, you know there's a handful of folks who are sort of committed to this uh, notion of of holding firm to something even without a backup plan in place. Uh, one would imagine that if you want to oust the speaker, you have somebody else uh, that that's lined up that you could that you could put in pretty quickly. Um, they didn't have that. Uh, they were they 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 got the teardown part done, but they didn't get the build back up part in place, and um, that would matter no matter what. But because we have this, um, we have this this economic crisis that, that, that will ensue if we don't fund the government. In addition to important events happening worldwide, as you know, um, it's it's more dire now than it would be under other circumstances. And that's what I was going to reiterate as well. I mean, it's really amplified by the conflict in the Middle East and another government shutdown looming. Americans are worried about their bottom line. Could this battle for the speakership impact the Republicans' chances uh, for the race uh, for the White House? It may have implications for the White House. I mean, if the American public gets gets more frustrated than than typical, you know, that Congress Congress's approval ratings aren't particularly high as it is. So there's some floor effect in terms of how low it could sink. Uh, but if it, if the Republicans get blamed for this, and if it gets tied to Donald Trump, and and he, of course, he's very much involved in this in a number of ways. If it gets tied to him. It could it could hamper his efforts. Some of these districts there have been some redistricting as well, right? So that also puts Republicans at risk uh, for taking the majority of the House again. That's exactly correct. That a lot of the district lines were different uh, in 2024 than they were in 2022. Even in, in some of the states where it wasn't settled, certainly we know the 2022 lines were different than 2020 in a lot of ways. And so, yeah, running again and, and having quality uh, opponents is, is something that uh, some of these, uh, especially can, um, especially members who haven't been in their in their seats for very long, uh, they're more vulnerable than, than than would be typically the case. All right, Professor Stephen Caliendo, thank you again.